So before we begin, I want to acknowledge that I'm currently seated on the land of the Muspiam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish nations. I know that many of you are on the land of other nations, so if you'd like, please now put those nation names in the chat. Always let us remember our connection to our siblings in these nations and pray for the day in which we might be with them in right relationship. Welcome, welcome to Living Interfaith. Know that the whole of you is welcome here. You are not asked to leave who you are there in your own home. Please bring who you are in with you to this community today. But what you are asked to remember is that the others here today have brought who they are into this community with them as well. And all, all of goodwill are welcome. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Carolyn and Greg who have kindly offered to provide the music for today's service. And I'm just going to remind everybody to please mute themselves or the music will not work. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. just Greg and I are unmuted and I don't know if Rachel can do that for everybody. I notice. Yes, I can do that also. Okay, I think we're okay. Um, now. I'm just going to share the slide. Okay. And just yourself, Rachel needs to be muted okay. too. Yeah. <clears throat> Oops. I think it's the other one. Come, come. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it. We're getting a preview of the service. It looks very interesting. Oh, there okay, we okay, here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> Sounded great. Yes. Thank you so much, um, Carolyn and Greg. That was so lovely. So glad that you were able to do that for us today. So for our announcements today, for those of you who have just joined, um, Kathy is not able to join us today. Her computer is not working. And also she needs to take her daughter, Inora, to tryouts for a competitive rock climbing team. Um, so I'll be leading today's service in her absence. And also Bruce and Cheryl, as you may have noticed, are um, not able to be here. And so um, Carolyn and Greg have kindly offered to provide today's music. And we have some exciting new music from them later on as well. Uh, after our last service on June 3rd, we held our annual council meeting. So I'm happy to share that we've re-elected Dora Lee Harrison as our president, uh, Sandy Huang as our vice president, and Bryn Crappy as our member at large. Dan Hoffman, um, who is a member at large, and Dolores Dooley, who is our secretary, were not up for election this year, so they're going to continue in their current roles. And we're excited to welcome two new council members. Justin Thurn will be our treasurer. And Steve Crawford is joining us as a member at large. So thank you, Steve. And Justin's not currently here, but thank you, Justin. We're so excited to have you. I'll be posting the meeting minutes on the website next week for anyone interested in further details. Um, tomorrow on Sunday, June 18th, the Greater Vancouver Food Bank is hosting a fundraiser called Foodstock 2023. 
It will be at the Swangard Stadium in Burnaby from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. And there will be live music, local beer and wine, food trucks and board games, or yard games, sorry. Uh, this is for people 19 and older and tickets are about $33, but it's for a great cause. Next Wednesday, June 21st, for the summer solstice, uh, Chief Arvel Looking Horse, the keeper of the white, bu white buffalo calf pipe for the Lakota Nation, will be holding a special world peace and prayer ceremony on the sacred Mount Shasta in California at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. There's a Zoom link available in a newsletter for those who are interested in attending. And from June 28th to July 2nd, there will be a summer silent retreat with Murray Groom and Nan Goodship at the Bethlehem Center in Nanaimo, BC, for those looking to deepen their spiritual practice. And on Saturday, July 1st, which is Canada Day, there will be a celebratory ceremony and barbecue at the Baitur Raman Mosque in Delta, and the public is encouraged to attend. Uh, that starts at 4 p.m. Uh, after today's service, we're going to be holding a brief listening circle uh, around the issue of affordable housing. So this is part of an initiative spearheaded by Metro Vancouver Alliance, which brings together faith groups, labor organizations, and nonprofits to advocate for the shared interests of their constituents. And this listening circle aims at identifying important themes and issues related to affordable housing that they might then address both in Vancouver and beyond. Um, are there any other announcements that people would like to share? Okay. Then I will start with our opening prayer. And this is from Guru Gobind Singh Ji, uh, the 10th and last human Sikh guru before the guru became the sacred text, which is the Guru Granth Sahib. Grant me, O oh God, this blessing. May I never refrain from righteous acts. May I fight without fear all the foes in the battle of life with the courage of faith to achieve victory. May my mind be ingrained with your teachings. May my highest ambition be to utter your praises. And when this mortal life comes to its end, may I die fighting in the battle with limitless courage. And now this is our candle lighting prayer from Yogi Bhajan. May you create peace within your being, understand your strength, create a relationship with your own soul and find the personal, impersonal and universal truth in your actions. May this day bring you the light of life and may you understand you are here to be here with joy, happiness and prayer. May you all be blessed. Satnam. Light our candle. And now is our time for the passing of the peace. So if everybody would like to just share a motion or a, a sharing of peace for each other. <laughs> peace be with you all. Peace, everyone. Peace and comfort. Well, now I'll move on to our joint affirmation. We come together in peace. We sing together in joy and with love. We worship together in one house, a house with names beyond number. Our paths are many, our beliefs are as leaves, and the tree that we cleave to is nourished by the light of compassion, justice, and mutual respect. May our lives, our beliefs, and our actions help to bring about the world of love we all seek, and let it begin here. Okay, so now we're going to have another treat from Carolyn and Greg, who are going to teach us a brief one line song. Well, I'm sure you already all know it. <laughs> it's Dona Nobis Pacham, which means bring us peace. And it's just those three words over and over again. So please feel welcome to harmonize in your own homes and, and, uh, we will do our best here too.
Thank you so much, um, Carolyn and Greg. That was so lovely. So may we now offer prayers in our own ways and our own homes in the silence of our own hearts. Let us remember all those who are struggling as a result of persecution and intolerance, climate change, injustice, poverty, and all the many other challenges in our world. So we'll take a moment of silence now. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And we're so grateful for everything that you bring to this community. We're also grateful for your financial donations. And I'll put our donation page in the chat. Uh, we really appreciate all of the regular donations that you are so kind to provide and also the generous outpouring of support that we, we received for our stewardship campaign this year, which has really served to keep us going and put us in a good place for the coming year. So I'll just put that in the chat now. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Carolyn and Greg, who are going to play our usual song at this time from You I Receive. And Rebecca, could I just ask that you um, mute yourself? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. And Rachel, too, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I Thank you. <clears throat> From you I receive, to you I give, together we share and from this we live. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share and from this we live. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Carolyn and Greg, for that lovely rendition. And so we had a speaker planned for today, but something came up and he needed to cancel. So instead, we're going to be learning about the martyrdom of Guru Arjan Devji, the fifth Sikh Guru, through a 15-minute animated video from the organization Basics of Sikhi. And I will bring that up for you now. And just so you know, there's nothing gruesome, but there is some difficult content in the fact that the martyrdom in, included some torture, um, rather brutal torture um, that will be described, but it's, it's not overwhelming. I just wanted to let you know before I put it up. <clears throat>
the events of Bandi Chor will forever be etched into the passages of history. The story is the cause for many to celebrate around the world to this day. Join us as we turn back the pages to discover the events that led to Bandi Chor. Our story begins with the birth of Siri Hargovindji. They were the only child of Mata Gangaji and Guru Arjan Devji, the fifth Sikh Guru. The fearless child would grow to become a great warrior, but the threat to their life started from their birth. A fire of jealousy burned Prithi Chand ever since his younger brother Guru Arjan Devji was made Guru instead of him. Prithi Chand wanted his own son Mirwan to be Guru after Guru Arjan Devji. Only one thing stood in his way, the Guru's newborn child. First, Prithi Chand instructed a midwife to poison Siri Hargobindji, but the poison entered her own body and she died instead. Secondly, Prithi Chand released a venomous snake near the home of Guru Arjan Devji. When Mata Gangaji wasn't looking, the snake slowly slithered towards her son. Just as the snake was ready to strike, Siri Hargobindji grabbed it like a toy and crushed it with their mighty strength. After all else had failed, Prithi Chand paid a priest to feed the child poison yogurt, but the child refused to eat and the priest died in great pain for his evil actions. Having survived the attempts on their life, Siddhi Hargobindji reached the age for marriage proposals. It was at this time that a priest was searching for a suitable match for Jandu's daughter. The priest suggested to Jandu that she ought to marry Guru Arjan Devji's son. Jandu laughed at the idea. He arrogantly declared that he was of a much higher status than the Guru and that he was far wealthier than the Guru too. Nevertheless, Jandu agreed to the proposal. When Guru Arjan Devji was presented with the marriage proposal, the Sikhs pleaded with Guruji not to accept because Jandu had spoken so negatively of the Guru. The Guru listened to the will of their Sikhs and refused the proposal. The prideful Jandal was furious when he heard of this. He demanded the priest go back to the Guru, threatening that if the marriage proposal wasn't accepted, then Jandal would never leave the Guru alone. But the insults given by Jandal cut deep in the heart of the Sikhs, who begged the Guru not to accept. The Guru could not refuse their Sikhs, and Siri Hargobindji's marriage was agreed elsewhere. Prithi Chand was so desperate for his son to become the Guru, that he plotted with one of Emperor Jahangir's generals, Sulhi Khan, to attack Guru Arjan Devji with an army. But on their journey, Sulhi Khan lost control of his horse, fell into a brick kiln and died. Meanwhile, Jandu was plotting his own revenge on Guru Arjan Devji. His opportunity finally came after Emperor Jahangir's son, Kusuro, came to Guru Arjan Devji for help. Before his death, Emperor Akbar preferred his grandson Kusuro to become ruler, but Kusuro's father, Jahangir, intervened and banished his own son to become emperor himself. The news of Kusuro asking Guruji for help reached Jandu, who took his chance. He encouraged the emperor to summon Guru Arjan Devji to answer for why they helped Kusuro. Emperor Jahangir was tentative at first but allowed Jandu to send a letter demanding Guruji's presence at the emperor's palace in Lahore. In complete acceptance of the will of the one, Guru Arjan Devji knew the time had come for them to leave their physical body. Before setting off for Lahore, Guruji asked Baba Buddhaji to make the necessary preparations. A ceremony took place in which Guru Arjan Devji anointed the next Guru, Guru Hargobind Sahibji. The light of Guru Nanak Devji was passed on, and the Sikhs had their sixth master. When the time came, Guru Arjan Devji paid their final respects at Siri Harmandar Sahib one last time. Guruji then set off for Lahore with five Sikhs by Jethaji, by Baranaji, by Langahaji, by Bidhi Chandji, and by Bairaji. The journey to Lahore was a long one. 
and Guru Arjan Dev Ji blessed many people along the way. Upon reaching Lahore, Guru Ji travelled along the banks of the river Ravi. As Jandu walked along the river one day, he was surprised to see such a big gathering. One of his servants told Jandu that people from far and wide had come to meditate together in the presence of Guru Arjan Dev Ji. The burning in Jandu's heart was unbearable and he rushed back to report to Emperor Jahangir. To create some enmity between the Guru and the Emperor, Jandu said that the Guru was taking money from the people of Lahore and thus becoming a more powerful threat to the throne. Emperor Jahangir sent a governor called Wazir Khan to escort Guruji to the palace. When Guru Arjan Dev Ji arrived at the palace, they were greeted with respect by the Emperor and were even given their own high seating, much to Jandu's disappointment. During their conversation, Emperor Jahangir asked Guru Arjan Dev Ji who was greater, Muslims or Hindus. It was at this moment that Guru Arjan Dev Ji revealed a divine Shabbat. Koi bole Ram Ram, koi Kodai, koi seve Gusaya, koi Allahe. That all faiths ultimately worship the same Creator in their own ways. After some time, Emperor Jahangir announced he was leaving Lahore and made his exit from the royal palace. A priest turned to Guruji and asked them to change Gurbani to include the praises of Emperor Jahangir. But Guruji refused to change a single letter as Gurbani is divine revelation from the One and is therefore perfect. Now that the Emperor was gone, Jandal seized his chance for revenge on Guru Arjan Dev Ji. He ordered the guards to imprison Guruji in Jandal's home and separated the five Sikhs from the Guru. And so began the five days that led to Guru Arjan Dev Ji's martyrdom. The scorching sun rose on the first day, just like the fire of revenge within Jandal. When he saw the Guru, Jandal roared his frustration at the rejection of his daughter's marriage proposal. He offered Guru Arjan Dev Ji an ultimatum, to accept the marriage proposal or accept death. But this didn't sway the Guru in the slightest. Guruji reminded Jandu that Jandu himself had declared that he was of too high a status for his daughter to marry Siri Hargobindji. This infuriated Jandu, who ordered his guards not to give food or water to the Guru and not to let them sleep either. Jandu demanded a payment of 100,000 coins if Guru Arjan Dev Ji wanted to eat, another 100,000 for every drink and 100,000 more if they wanted to sleep. When he awoke the next morning, Jandal was convinced that no food, water or sleep in the blazing hot month of Jed would have crushed the Guru's resolve. Meanwhile, the crowds were panicking without their beloved Guru. When the crowds heard the prayers of the five six in a courtyard building, they knew the Guru was close by but the guards ordered the crowd to return back to their homes. Lack of food, water and sleep had no effect on Guru Arjan Dev Ji, who refused the marriage proposal yet again. Jandal flew into a wild rage and ordered his guards to boil water in a large cauldron. Steam was rising from the bubbling hot water as Jandal ordered his guards to place Guruji in the cauldron. To Jandal's surprise, Guru Arjan Dev Ji arose and made their own way to the boiling water. They sat in the water with ease and didn't even flinch as they remained in meditation on the one. Bhai Barana Ji had seen enough. He begged Guru Arjan Dev Ji to give the order and he would crush the cities of Delhi and Lahore with a clap of his hands. Guru Ji calmly asked Bhai Barana Ji to remember that the Creator had given him this power in the first place and everything that was happening, no matter how dreadful, was in the Creator's will. Seeing this commotion, Jandal realized that the boiling water was having no effect on the Guru, who even told their own Sikhs to stand down and accept what was happening. The reluctant Jandal gave up, and Guru Arjan Dev Ji was taken back to Jandal's home. 
the second day of Guru Arjan Dev Ji's martyrdom had come to an end. The boiling water hadn't worked, so on the third day, Chandal devised an even harsher way to try and break Guru Arjan Dev Ji, who refused the marriage proposal again. Chandal had his guards heat sand on a fire. The sand was heated for so long that it glowed red as if it was taken from the burning hot sun itself. Jundal had foolishly given in to his thirst for revenge, as he warned Guru Arjan Dev Ji that Guruji would now feel the burning that Jundal was suffering from. Seeing Guru Arjan Dev Ji's precious body on the hot sand, the six cried out in anguish. They begged for their beloved Guru to be spared and offered to be placed on the sand instead. The six resisted the beatings of the guards before Guru Arjan Dev Ji called out to them. And Guru Ji asked them to remember that all that was happening was the will of the one and to accept this truth. Seeing that the burning sand was having no reaction from the unwavering Guru, Jindal instructed his guards to start pouring the hot sand over them. But what good was it to try and hurt the form of the one? Even when boils and blisters formed on their precious body, Guru Arjan Dev Ji remained absorbed in meditation. Guru Ji withstood six hours of torture and the foolish Jandu had no choice but to give up once again. The fourth day saw Chandu order a large metal plate to be placed over a raging fire. It wasn't long before the black plate glowed bright red. Miraculously, Guru Arjan Dev Ji remained as cool as the moon as they took their seat on the hot plate. Even after three hours, Guru Ji remained steadfast on the path of righteousness. All who witnessed this were left astounded at the miracle unfolding before them. Neither boiling water, hot sand or a burning plate could move Guru Arjan Dev Ji's loving focus on the one. On the fifth and final day, the shame of failure coursed through the veins of Jandal. He said that he would be successful where Sulhi Khan, Sulbi Khan and Prithi Chand had failed to kill Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Blinded by such hate, he resorted to one last attempt to break the Guru. He declared that the Guru would accept the marriage proposal or accept death by suffocation in a cow's hide, a dishonorable fate for the holy. Without fear, Guru Arjan Dev Ji explained that they would wash in the river Ravi before making their decision. Chandu agreed, seizing his chance to bring an end to his own misery. Seeing the blistered body and scorched souls of their beloved Guru, the five six helped their master complete their journey. The crowds gathered to see the greatness of the Guru, who showed no sign of pain or remorse and refused to give in to those who tried to oppress them. Beholding such a miraculous feat, the crowds bowed in respect to Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Upon reaching the river Ravi, Bailangaha Ji gently washed the blistered feet of their cherished Guru. What unbearable pain must the six have felt in their hearts at this time? Guru Arjan Dev Ji washed in the river and was dressed in dry clothing once they rejoined the five six. Nearing the end of their great sacrifice, Guru Arjan Dev Ji lovingly recited Japji Sahib as the crowds closed in to listen. Guruji then gave their final instructions to their six. Guruji started by explaining that the work they had come to do was now complete and the time had come for them to leave their physical body. They instructed the six to relay what had happened to Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji and remind their son not to feel any sorrow for what had happened. Guru Arjan Dev Ji instructed their son to prepare a powerful army for their six would now face a time of war. Guruji explained that their body would not be cremated by fire 
they wish to be submerged in the river instead. Just like the wave merges back with the ocean, and Guru Arjan Dev Ji left their physical body and immersed back into the one. Such was the greatness of Guru Arjan Dev Ji, the beacon of light for all. Despite the attempts by the cruel and wicked, the fifth Guru of the six never wavered in their defense of righteousness. Guruji would be known for the rest of time as Shahidan De Sardaj, the crown of the martyrs. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, Oh, you're you're muted, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the story of the martyrdom of Guru Arjan Dev Ji. I know that I learned a lot. Um, I am definitely not an expert, so I won't be able to answer any questions that you have. But um, one thing that I learned um, that I looked up after viewing this video was I was curious about the use of the pronouns, um, they and them for the guru. And I found a couple of explanations. Uh, one is that these are the pronouns used in Punjabi for elders. And so they're translated into the third person in English. And then the second was that the gurus are viewed as containing a combination of both masculine and feminine aspects in body and soul. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and then also I thought I would just add, I don't know how many of you attended um, the event at the Gurdwara in Surrey a while back. But um, I remember asking about the Sikh warrior, um, sort of uh, warrior ethic, I guess, because um, I was curious as to whether the Sikh religion considered nonviolence an important um, moral component of their faith. And they said that they did, and that the warrior saints are seen as protecting the oppressed. So they said that when somebody, um, acts in a violent manner as a warrior saint, they are doing so at the initiative of the divine. And he shared a story um, of a sick warrior who wanted to kill someone and stopped right before doing it. And the man asked him, why did you not kill me? And he said, because I wanted to. So the idea is that violence only is done for the greater good. And if it's on the, um, on the impetus of the human being, then it's not. Um, divine will. So I thought that was interesting. <clears throat> so as a reminder of the importance of embracing those with different religious, political, ethnic, and sexual identities, uh, Carolyn and Greg are now going to teach us a beautiful new song that they want to share as an offering of peace and celebration for Pride Month called We Are a Rainbow, written by David Kai. So I'm going to share a slide with the chorus and Carolyn and Greg are going to sing the verses and teach us the chorus. Okay, do you want me to run through the chorus first? Oh, um, well, I, yeah, I, I just, I just want to say that um, David is a third generation Canadian of Japanese descent who grew up attending the Toronto Japanese United Church. And the inspiration for this hymn draws on rainbow colored imagery in the Bible and the imagery of light. Um, the hymn suggests that affirming ministries have a badly needed light, which they can proudly share with the world. And we felt that this lovely hymn could also speak to the light that our small and mighty living interface sanctuary community brings to the world. So, um, as Rachel said, this time we will sing the verses and we invite you to sing along with the chorus from your home and that will come up four times. And then maybe if we sing it again sometime, we'll, uh, you'll know it and we'll all sing it together. Do you want me to run the chorus once? Um, sure. Greg's okay. going to run the chorus once. Okay, here you are. And just, just on piano? Uh, or? No, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here's the chorus. We are a rainbow, sign of covenant and peace, for the flood of tears will finally cease to be. Come shine your rainbow, splash your hues across the sky, paint the world in colors, proud and bold and free. So that's your
your part. Got it? <laughs> Here's our part. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> Thank you again, um, Carolyn and Greg, that was so lovely. Um, the service would not have been the same without you both uh, contributing what you did here today. It was really amazing. So uh, we're gonna end, end, end a little bit early today. Um, uh, we can keep the Zoom open for anyone who wants to stay and discuss the video. And then we're going to return at 11.15 for a listening circle. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is part of an effort by the Metro Vancouver Alliance to understand better the issues of affordable housing in Vancouver, but also beyond. So even if you don't live in Vancouver, you're welcome to stay and participate. Um, and so I'll just close this out and then anyone who would like to stay can do so and discuss the video. Um, and anybody who would like to come back at 1115 for the listening circle can do so. So may we all remember to honor the light in ourselves and in each other, to embrace our differences as well as our similarities. May each of us go forth and shine our lights into the world. Amen.